Well, welcome, and, and this is just a brief update on viral origins. Now, last year we were getting reports that SARS coronavirus 2 had been found in sewage in March 2019 in Barcelona in Spain. But it wasn't really clear where those reports were coming from, and they were just reported in newspapers rather than journals. So I want to update you on that now. And this, this comes with some authority. In fact, uh, quite a lot of authority. It's uh, published directly here by the University of Barcelona, which, of course, is a very reputable institution. And you can read the report there. And they've also published this in a uh, preprint. Now, this is a preprint. Um, I've read it. It looks good to me. But, of course, I'm not a specialised uh, peer reviewer. Um, feel free to look at it for yourself. It has been. Uh, they've told us that it has been submitted to a, uh, a high-impact peer-reviewed journal. So it would be interesting to see if this is going to be peer-reviewed. And from what I understand from the news report from Barcelona University and from the paper, the preprint paper, it will be uh, approved for peer review, perhaps without too many alterations. So this is really remarkably interesting now people were asking me a lot about this a few months ago when it started to leak out but I didn't report on it then because it was uh, I did a literature search for it and it was just in popular news outlets so it was in quite quite a few popular news outlets but there was nothing sort of scientific from a university or, or from a publication now there is so I didn't want to go take you and me anywhere that wasn't evidence-based but this does appear to be so SARS coronavirus 2 detected in waste water in Barcelona on the 12th of March 2019. Now, this, of course, is just completely intriguing. The 12th of March, as we say, at University of Barcelona. Now, of course, we know Wuhan early December 2019. So this is like nine months before that. Um, we know that the virus wasn't officially reported in Europe. France was the first officially reporting uh, state uh, to report in Europe in uh, late January. But looking back, and this has been written about in a few places, there was people in France and Spain in late 19, and we've looked at this before. So when we say late 19, sort of October, November, December, basically the flu season the early flu season in 2019. And there was quite a few people who had influenza type symptoms, which did appear to be atypical in France and Spain. And of course, many, many people have written to me and have discussed amongst themselves um, as to whether they had um, COVID in this kind of time period. So um, this makes it possible, possible, probable, possible, wherever you'd like to put that. Uh, the first case in Barcelona was actually reported on the 25th of February um, 2020. So quite a bit even after the cases in France. And yet here we're saying it was in sewage in the 12th of March 2019, long time before. Now, even in respiratory samples, infectivity is only associated with the very high genome copy numbers. Direct quote from the paper. Now, what this is saying is, to catch COVID-19, you need to receive quite a lot of the viruses. This is what we call the inoculum. So if you get like two viruses, you're probably not going to catch the disease. It's probably taking quite a few hundred viral particles to catch the disease. So it's saying, and, and it's saying it most likely this is going to be transmitted in respiratory format. So although the virus, when someone's infected with a virus, it does get into the gastrointestinal tract, they do excrete it in their stools. By the time it gets into sewage, it's very dilute and probably does not pose a direct infection risk. That's what they're saying. Now, it may, it may, there may be some infection risk, but it's believed to be massively, massively smaller than the large inoculum dose you would receive from uh, the exhalations of uh, an infected person, for example. So they're not talking about sewage monitoring as a risk of transmission. You can't absolutely eliminate it, but it's phenomenally unlikely, even for sewage workers. I remember we did speculate, speculate uh, about this at the time, when we first learned that uh, SARS coronavirus 2 was excreted in urine and feces. So they're not saying it's a method of transmission. Now, what, what they did here, there's two plants in Barcelona 
and they'd fortunately frozen 800 mil archival samples of sewage. From when? Well, from January to March 18. January to March 18, they had samples. When these, these, these were analysed, they did not. They did not find any SARS coronavirus 2 in those samples. But they also found that they'd stored samples from January, March, September and December 2019. Now, it's unclear from the paper whether they'd save samples in um, February, they say March, so April, May, June, July. They just simply don't say whether they had samples from that time or not. It looks like they may not. It wasn't in the paper. So we simply don't know that. Um, so January, there was no SARS coronavirus 2. September, there was none. December, there was none. But March, there was. So all samples came out to be negative for the presence of SARS coronavirus 2 genomes, apart from this one sample on the 12th of March. Interesting. Interesting. Um, with the exception of March the 12th, 2019, in which both IP2 and IP4 target assays were positive. Now, these are parts of the genome. So the SARS coronavirus 2 genome, they are specific. So this test was not based on one part of the SARS coronavirus 2 genome. There was testing for two parts of the SARS coronavirus 2 genome using standard PCR techniques, in fact, from the Pasteur Institute in France. So very reliable techniques, and they found this virus represented twice. So it's really hard to see how this couldn't be a correct positive sample from the 12th of March 2019. And the next time they detected it in sewage wasn't until the 15th of January, 2020. So from the 12th of March to the 15th of January, 2020, uh, there was nothing apparent. It didn't come up positive. So two possibilities. Either this is not a genuine result and it's some form of contamination, but that looks unlikely. They were very thorough but peer review should uh, indicate that second possibility is this is completely genuine this was SARS coronavirus 2 in sewage in Barcelona in northern Spain on the 12th of January 2019 now I think it is a genuine result from reading this paper it appears to be a genuine result and the fact that the University of Barcelona have allowed this to go out means they must have done some internal peer review I mean prestigious universities don't publish this sort of thing unless they're uh, have, a, have a reasonable degree of confidence. So what's happened here? Now, does this mean people often say, look, the virus was discovered in Wuhan late 19, December 19, discovered in Spain, March 19, therefore it probably comes from Spain. Well, no, it doesn't mean that because the phylogenetic predecessors of the SARS coronavirus 2 virus that we have are most consistent with wild type viruses in in, in the Hubei area. So I still believe that the phylogenetics, the descendants, the, the, looking at the genetics and the inheritance of this virus, it still originated in Wuhan. I still think that's by far the most likely. So it looks like the virus was actually out and about to some extent, presumably in China, uh, on the 12th of March or before that, someone had flown from China. Now, there's a lot of coming and going Barcelona, China. It's quite common. There's quite a lot of people uh, from China work in the agricultural sector in northern Spain, northern Italy. Um, and it looks like this could have been just from one, one or two or three people with a positive stool sample. So it could be a very small sample, but it could mean there was a small degree of community transmission after that. And that's what uh, gave rise to these atypical cases of flu in Spain, France and possibly Italy towards the end of 2019. Now, it's hard to know because typically the blood samples and things aren't stored. And if the people have antibodies now, when, well, what does that mean? You know, they could have picked it up in either of the waves of the pandemic. But intriguing, it looks like there was some spread early. So if it was, if it was positive on the 12th of March in sewage, 
2019. Presumably that means, and, and it, if we assume it came from China, which we don't know, but if we assume it does, and that, that's where the phylogenetics indicates it originally came from, as we've said, because that's where most similar coronaviruses are, then presumably it came from China in February, possibly February 2019. So, um, we wait with bated breath for the full report to President Biden. Uh, it was due to be in 90 days. That was last week. So it's in about another 85 days or something. And hope that some of these questions are going to be answered. We look forward to the World Health Organization wading in on this. And of course, we look forward to the uh, transparent cooperation of all the Chinese uh, agencies involved that the truth may be derived. Uh, we look forward to that. We hope for that. Um, whether that happens or not, of course, remains to be seen. Now, getting back to this sample specimen that tested positive on the 15th of January, um, which, of course, is not surprising because this is when the virus probably arrived. But that was 41 days before the first official case in Spain on the 25th of February. So in other words, what this means is that by looking at sewage uh, in Spain, they would be able to detect the presence of the virus 41 days before it was detected in a human being via a PCR test from someone who was symptomatic. Long time. And we have been doing this in the UK to monitor the India variant. There's been surveillance of sewage and that has determined uh, restrictions in certain particular advice to particular parts of the country. So the paper says... Uh, sentinel surveillance of SARS coronavirus during wastewater would enable adoption of immediate measures in the event of future COVID-19 waves and indeed uh, other novel viruses which come along. So pretty poignant. So we've had that discussion whether that's genuine or not. We believe it is genuine. But then a completely separate point, really, the fact that it was discovered again on the 15th of January in sewage in Barcelona, a full 41 days before it was clinically identified. And we have this sentinel surveillance, the outlying picket detecting the presence of um, potential viral disease in future. Uh, now, just to finish here, uh, Albert, Albert uh, Bosch, a president of Spanish Society of Virology Comments, direct quotes. Barcelona receives many visitors from both tourists and professional reasons and lots of agricultural workers as well who work in the uh, informal sector. They just come and go and presumably it's a lot of cash payments. We don't really know. But there is quite a lot of Chinese workers in that, in those areas, in the agricultural areas. It's possible for a similar uh, situation to have taken place in other parts of the world. So here this virologist is saying, look, because this has happened in Barcelona in Spain and we have people flying around the world from China uh, to the States, to the UK, all over the place, just as we do to Barcelona, um, it's possible for a similar situation to have taken place in other parts of the world. In other words, he's saying that there, there could have been traces of this virus in the United States of water in March. He's saying that's possible. Interesting. Uh, since most of the COVID-19 cases show a similar symptomatology to the flu, these cases could have been disguised as an undiagnosed influenza. So perhaps in the 19, 2019 to 2020 influenza um, outbreaks in Europe and potentially in the States, some of those cases were COVID, just not recognised as such. And we might never know. Well, I don't think we'll ever know the extent of that. But that's um, of a recognised virologist saying that that is certainly possible. If it happened in Barcelona, it could have happened in other places. So quite intriguing. Um, now, are we going to get to the bottom of the absolute origins of this virus um, in the short, medium term? I'm not holding my breath, really. Longer term, I think we probably will. Um, science can bring the truth to the surface but it may be in the longer term or when I say longer term I mean perhaps it's going to be two three four five maybe more years before we know the full story 
But we look forward to the report. I'm hoping Mr. Biden is going to share it with the rest of us. So if you watch Mr. President, we'd love to see it when it arrives on your desk. And uh, that is us for this update. Intriguing. And thank you for watching.